a reason. Uh, the brother we're going to hear from next, Ustad William Halim Briannis, is another good brother, a committed Muslim brother, um, right here from uh, the state of Maryland, um, part of you know uh, the DMV, the Greater Washington D.C. area. He is um, the author of a book that we highlighted. Um, it might have been about a year ago. I think the, it may be about a year that this book has been out. Uh, a book titled, a very provocative title, um, Message to the White Man in America. Now, this book is a very thought-provoking read. It's a big book. And... Um, As I was preparing for today's broadcast, it, it, it reminded me the title, both the title and the subject matter and the dawa that this book does. And it's not just the dawa to the white American community. This is a book of dawa that uh, is of great benefit to uh, any and all tribes, anyone that's interested in um some, you know, provocative discourse on, you know, the, the state that our country and our world is in and the uh, remedy that Islam represents uh, for this uh, dire state that we're in. I, 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 along those lines, I was reminded of this, uh, one of the profound uh, quotes of El Haj Malik Al Shabazz, uh, Malcolm X, from his letter, the letter that he sent back home uh, to his uh, close compatriots, a, a, a message that was to be conveyed through them uh, to the public at large uh, that signaled his uh, the, the growth, the rapid. Uh, spiritual and ideological growth uh, that uh, our brother experienced uh, during the Hajj and, and the deep reflections that, that he engaged in, uh, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the struggle that America had to uh, undertake in order to correct itself, in order to reform itself. One of the paragraphs in that letter reads, quote, if white Americans could accept the religion of Islam, if they could accept the oneness of God, Allah, they too could then sincerely accept the oneness of men and cease to measure others always in terms of their differences in color. With racism now plaguing America like an incurable cancer, all thinking Americans should be more res uh, uh, responsive to Islam as an already proven solution to the race problem. This was one of the uh, uh, thoughts, one of the challenges that uh, El Haj Malik El Shabazz included in his letter. Uh, back home uh, from Hajj. Now, with that said, I want to uh, bring on our brother, Ustad William uh, Briannis, uh, with a uh, warm assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's good to be on with you again. Thank you for having me. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It's good to have you with me, brother. Um, you know, Aki, in, in preparing for today's broadcast and specifically this segment with you, um, I couldn't help but reflect over the fact that our former president, Donald Trump, he is the textbook definition of a demagogue. Uh, textbook definition. And uh, the danger that he and those who blindly follow him or those 
and, and, and among those who are blindly following him, there are no doubt uh, the politicals who are um, following him simply because they perceive it as being in their interests. You know, they're, they're, they, they, the, the pledge that they made to protect America from all enemies, foreign uh, and domestic, uh, be damned. You know, it's, it's all about uh, their own personal fortunes and, and uh, what is in their interests. It's about expediency. But then there are a significant number of folk who are hurting. There are a lot of people who are hurting and they are blindly following a demagogue like Trump and his acolytes through their pain. They're hurting. Um, they're hurting economically. They're hurting uh, in, 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 ter in terms of their families. They're hurting in terms of the uncertainties of tomorrow and what tomorrow may bring. And it's easy for someone uh, who uh, is uh, uh, a demagogue, you know, to manipulate that kind of pain and that kind of fear, that kind, that kind of anxiety. Um, but there needs to be a discussion, you know, on what has to happen, what can happen in order to change things for the better. For this country before it's too late and uh I, again I, I i i couldn't help but to reflect upon this thought-provoking book that uh, you authored and published about a year ago i guess it was message to the white man in america let's begin there um <clears throat> what are your thoughts like me on where we are as a country right now vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, um, the kind of things that we need to do internally in order to change, bring about substantive change before it's too late. Now, and this, this and it goes to the issue of Dawa. What, what does Dawa within this context mean to you? Well, I, I think that, you know, preliminary, pre, preliminarily, we, we want to address the fact that, you know, what you said is absolutely true is that people are in pain and people are suffering. And, and that's, I think that we, we have to start there. And one of the things to mention here is that this book didn't come out of a vacuum. And we spoke about this a little bit the last time you had me on, which I, I guess it has been about a year now. And that is, you know, this book is written to mirror message to the black man in America by Elijah Muhammad. And so whatever he spoke about, that's what I spoke about. And the reason that I mentioned that again is because Elijah Muhammad's goal, his mission was he recognized that his people were in a situation and they needed help. And so he was trying to offer them a solution. And that's the same state that we're in today is that we see a people who are suffering. They, And, and I, I mentioned this in the book is that we have to differentiate between America as a government and America as a nation of people. And as a government, you know, that's a whole nother conversation, but America as a nation of people, we still tend to, uh, the majority of Americans still tend to cling to their fitra, you know, their primordial nature, their, their humanity. And so there's things that they expect to be right and wholesome, a family, for example, but we see the family being destroyed. We see family structure being attacked. We see uh, marriage as an institution being attacked. And this hurts people. You know, this, this people don't think, oh, well, it doesn't have anything to do with you. No, it does have something to do with us because it actually affects our fitra. It, it affects our primordial nature as a human being. And it harms psychologically. This, this, there's trauma being induced. And then, you know, we're also bombarded today with the technology. And this technology doesn't just promote por uh, fornica uh, uh, pornography, excuse me, which it does, you know, and th that promotes fornication, which, uh, of course, promotes the, the destruction of family. But more than that is that we get bombarded with news and negativity and all of these things, which also harms us. And so there's a lot of fear mongering that takes place. You know, people are told that there's a food shortage. We're told that, you know, these, uh, you know, the, the economy is what it is. Look at the gas prices. All of these things are being fed to us. So fear is literally being fed to us. And so it becomes a problem, you know, and so people are hurting and, and we have all of this going on and people need a solution. 
right? People need a solution, and we have that solution. We ha we have the solution, uh, and and I think that Donald Trump, he he's uh, first and foremost, he was seen as a non-politician. He was seen as somebody who was outside of Washington. He was seen as somebody who was going to fight against the status quo, which is what the common man wants. Not only that. He did some things that are pretty heroic in that he didn't accept pay for presidency. You know, he he ran, he he he. Uh, uh, what can we say? He he presided over the country. He was he served as president over the country, uh, and didn't take any pay for that. And he took the pay and he gave it back, or you know whatever that might mean. And so there are these realities. And he made promises to his base, and he fulfilled those promises. These are all things that people were looking at. And so what what did he actually stand for in their eyes? He stood for a return to America, a return to the America that people envision or idealize or however you want to frame that. And because he stood for that, people get rallied behind him. And a lot of the people that you see rallying behind him, these are people who all they're really calling to, all they're calling to is traditional living. All they're calling to is family. All they're calling to is proper education. All they're calling to is hard work and, and self-sufficiency and, and these types of things. And so he stood for that and he played on that. And so this is why he got the people around him. The, the, the issue is that he didn't offer solutions for that. You know, we have the solutions. And so this is where our role comes in. What Dawa actually looks like to me is that we offer these solutions. We, we actually introduced people to the solutions that Islam holds. Mm -hmm. Okay, Agi, you know something? Um, I think it, it it's, it's appropriate to... Uh, uh, to correct a perception that someone might walk away with uh, a given part, just a small part of what you said. I mean, I agree with 99.9% uh, .9 of what you just said, but there was just one point no, that problem. is, 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 I think it's, it's important uh, to correct. No politician, certainly in my memory, has been able to monetize a political office in the way that Trump has. Now, I don't know if what you said about him not accepting a salary is true or not. Uh, it may be. But even if he didn't accept a salary, uh, he and his company, <laughs> uh, you know, they got paid more than any other president certainly in recent time and, and and the fact he is still he and his organization are still monetizing um what uh, uh he was able to achieve politically so uh um with that said the other points that you made are very well taken and i want is is there do you have the copy of the book in front of you aki I don't have it. I, I, I do, but it's a rough draft. So that. It's a rough draft. Is there, is there any paragraph or two in the draft that you have in front of you that you'd like to share that you feel would be relevant for sharing with the uh, viewing audience? Oh, you, you put me on the spot here. <laughs> um, let me, let me, let me see. Give me, give me one moment inshallah. This is a, uh, because there's an actual, there's an entire section that deals with this, this, the current events, if you will, and that is um, the section on the reckoning, you know, the corruption in the land, that the decline and fall of America, you know, these types of things, and so we actually have an entire section that goes over these things, and so you know, um, let me let me pull this up. Huh? I said, yeah. Why don't you share a little bit of that? That's I. I'll, I'll find something that's suitable. Okay. Um, and while you're looking, I, I just want to say to the uh, to the viewing audience, to our viewers and listeners, that this topic uh, of the dawa um, that's needed for today is it, it is a very important topic. It's you know I would I would say to our imams and our you know our various other shuyuk and 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 to the da'is out there that um, we really need to do a a much more effective job at 
making the dawa that Islam represents uh, both internally and externally as relevant as we possibly can because it is in fact a mercy and a healing for humanity. It's, it's not just a mercy and healing for what ails us uh, as Muslims, but for the whole of humanity. And, and this is uh, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him was an exemplar for the whole of humanity. We as the students and the followers of Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, are, are, you know, it is upon us to strive to the best of our ability to be an exemplar for those around us. Um, so, my brother, have you found something you want to share? I, I don't know how appropriate it is, but, you know, it's it's something quick and easy, inshallah. So this is from the 118th chapter. And, and I'll say that there's a lot of chapters. It's 500 pages long, but they're easy to read. They are. But the 118th chapter is America's fate sealed. Right? It reads, how many in America today believe that she is unlike any nation before? They see her as being the first of her kind. They, fa they fail to see the parallels between her and the many great nations that have passed away before, be it Babylon or Egypt, Greece or Rome. And like all those nations before her, if she follows them into wickedness, injustice and oppression, she too will pass into the annals of history, a great nation that was. If we looked at the previous nations, we see despite their political, financial and military strength, they became corrupt. They encouraged open transgressions and illicit behavior of every kind. Promiscuity and intoxication became normal amongst the citizens. The markets became corrupt and the military forces were used to usurp the rights of other peoples. What is it about America today that is different? How many of those nations of old were defeated by the neighboring nations and how many were defeated due to internal struggles? This way or that, one after one, they fell. Do not think we are any different. I warn with a clear warning. I'll read one more paragraph and then I'll end. I warn with a clear warning. If we keep traveling the same path as previous nations, we shall surely fall off of the same cliff which they fell from. We look around and we cannot see a single evil deed that is not done openly and without shame. Intoxication, fornication, homosexuality, gossiping and slander, even violence has been normalized. It was once said about America, here, individuals of all nations are melted into a new race of men whose labor and posterity will one day cause great change in the world. The question arises, are those great changes for the better or for the worse? Mm. Yes, indeed. That's a very uh, <laughs> provoc uh, provocative ending, Aki. Let me um, ask you, uh, you know, as we near the conclusion of today's broadcast, what do you see? as the foremost challenges uh, confronting uh, uh, our Muslim community uh, and our non-Muslim neighbors, you know, vis-a-vis uh, -vis this, um, this, this, this need for a, a call to something better, you know, what do you see as, as being the greatest Dawa challenges, you know, both internally and externally from where from where you are? SubhanAllah, it's the same, you know, it's the same. And and I, I honestly believe that we're living in an age. It's And I believe it's the first age in the history of mankind. And Allah knows best about this, where uh, disbelief is taught openly. And when I say disbelief, I don't mean other religions. What I mean here is that a rejection of the divine, a complete rejection. We're taught in school from kindergarten until higher education, until a person attains their PhD, that God is not real and that everything happened by haphazard chance. And we are all a mistake. We're all just accidents in the universe. This is what is promoted in our psyche. And so even in the Muslim community where we claim that we believe in God, right, our 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 actions don't demonstrate that, right? So we have to call people back to really believing, truly believing in God and, and, and living lives that reflect that, trusting in God, relying upon God, 
turning to God. These are things that in the Muslim community, I'm not talking about the non-Muslims, this is things in, in the Muslim community that we see lip service given to, but we don't see the realities. And because we don't see the realities, we don't see the fruits. And the same is true of the non-Muslim community. Of course, there's a lot more work to do because there, many of them don't even believe, whereas in the Muslim community, at least there's lip service. Having said that, I personally believe that the, the greatest uh, method of doing this is actually not calling people directly to God, but calling people to know, to find out who is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was his character? What was his example? Because if we, if we start following the example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we heal and we draw near to God. And if we could demonstrate that to the non-Muslims, if we can actually show them living examples of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I do believe that they, they will want what we have. But we have to demonstrate it to them. We can't talk to them. We can't tell them about it. We have to show them. And in order to show them, we have to be about it ourselves. Alhamdulillah. So that's a very fitting way to end. A reminder uh, to you know be careful of the life you lead. You may be the only book that some people read. Uh, so um, any closing thought, Aki? Abdullah, my my closing. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll follow with. Uh, and also, how is your book doing? And how is your book doing? Alhamdulillah, the book is going well. I, I'm trying to put it in as many hands as I can. I think I give away far more than I sell, to be honest. And that's okay because <laughs> yeah, the, it's not about it's not about profit. It's about getting this message to people. You know, um, I, I am working on a second edition because other than the size of it, which is the number one complaint, the other complaint was there's no index. So I. I'm going to do a second edition and put an index in it, inshallah. But um, as far as closing statements, I would begin by, you know, thanking you for this opportunity, thanking the, the media, media platform and the like. But um, I, I think that we have to realize that all of us have roles. All of us have roles. And no matter whether we're gardeners, whether we're janitors, whether we're, you know, uh, imams, whether we're teachers, no matter who we are, we have a role to do. And the role that all of us can do in whatever capacity we have is offer the solution to people. To stop. We, we know that there's problems. We know we, we're living in the problems. We see the problems. We experience the problems. We don't need to keep talking about problems. We have to offer and demonstrate viable solutions. That's, that's what we have to do, inshallah. Okay, my brother, thank you. That's a very fitting note to end on. Um, we thank those who uh, were able to join us live and we encourage you if you found uh, value, if you see value in today's broadcast to share it with as many others as you possibly can. And uh, we end as we normally do with uh, Surah Asr. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wal Asr. Innal insana lafi kusr. إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر which means in translation of the meaning in the name of Allah the beneficent the merciful by the token of time through the ages surely humanity is in loss except those who believe and do good and exhort one another to truth and exhort one another to patiently persevere Peace be unto you all. I thank again our guests, Imam Yusuf Rios and uh, Ustad uh, William Halim Brianis, uh, and to the audience, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>